Okay. Okay, let's get started with a little bit of deep breathing and some stretching. Like I said, today, usually on Fridays, we call it mobility day. Uh, we usually dig out a lot of foam rollers and things, and so I'm sure a lot of you don't have those. So we're just gonna, um, we're just gonna do a, a lot of the same thing as far as just with stretching and things like that. Um, and then I, again, wanna point out uh, to do some neck and wrist and arm. I've had a lot of people tell me upper back, um, all that stuff. So let's start with some breathing. So feet are just a little bit wider than your hips. So I want you to bend your knees, inhale up, exhale, forward fold. So bend forward at your hips. We're going to do that a few times. Forward fold. Good. We're going to do this three more times. A couple more. One more here. Exhale, forward fold here now. When you forward fold, I want you to hold it there. So you can have a little bit of a bend in your knee if you need. We're gonna inhale right here. Exhale just as you exhale, try to get your fingers closer to the floor. Let your low back and your legs, let them go, let them relax. We're gonna do three here. Every time you exhale, just let your low back and your legs go. And you should notice everything relaxing. You're getting a little bit further down. So everybody's different. So if you can get your tip, tip of your fingers, knuckles, hands, whatever works. Two more deep breaths here. One more. Awesome, bend your knees, come on up. We're gonna repeat that, this time instead of forward folding, we're gonna add a back bend. So you're gonna bend your knees, inhale up. Exhale, back bend. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, inhale up. Exhale, backward bend. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Good job. We're going to do two more of those. Inhale up. Exhale, back bend. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. One more. Up. Exhale, back bend. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Good, now just come up to the start. We're gonna repeat that one more time with wide legs. So widen your legs, bend your knee, inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. We're getting warmed up, so you should be able to go a little bit further. Bend your knees, inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. One more here. This exhale, we're gonna back bend. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. One more, bend your knees, inhale up. Exhale, back bend. Inhale, reach to the sky. And exhale, forward fold. You're gonna hold it there. Hopefully by now we've gotten at least fingertips on the floor. Give me a big breath in. Exhale, forward fold some more. One more. Okay, good, come on up. All right, so we're gonna come down, we're gonna do some core, um, and then when we get to our stretching, so you can have shoes on, off, barefoot, whatever you wanna do, it's totally up to you. So we're gonna start with core. So I want you to be on your um, hands and knees, in an all fours position. And we're gonna start working 
on some back stability. So your hands are under your shoulders, your knees are under your hips. Uh, pull your toes towards your nose. So everything is really solid. So you want to imagine between your shoulder and your hip, that trunk stays real straight. So three modifications. So one is an arm raise like this. The second would be a leg raise. That's a little bit harder. And then the third is opposite arm and leg. So you pick wherever you're at. Okay, so let's start. And then you're gonna come back down to the start. Another advancement is you can bring your elbow to your knee. So whichever one you choose, that's fine. You're just gonna go in and out. So whether it's just arm, just leg, or arm and leg like this coming down, or arm and leg, elbow to knee. Pull your belly button in nice and tight. Your chin should be tucked. You're looking down at the mat. When you tuck that chin, you might notice a little bit of tightness in the back of the neck. Just focus on keeping that chin tucked. Helps to stretch out the back of that neck. Good job, three more. Good, okay, let's switch. So you're either gonna go the opposite arm, the opposite leg you did, or the alternating. And go. So you pick what works for you. Good, and again, focusing on that belly button pulled in tight, your chin is tucked, you're looking at the floor. Three more. Two. And last one, nice job. We're gonna flip over. So for some of these, I'm gonna add a weight. If you have a weight around, you can. If not, you can do these without weight. I just gotta get my timer here so I keep track of where we're all at here. Okay, so you're on your back, your knees are bent. We're gonna start with crunches. So you're gonna go up for a count of two and down for a count of two. So let's get ready here. Keep your back flat. So pull your belly button in. You can be on your whole foot, heels. Up for two, down for two. You're leading with the shoulders. Don't lead with the head, lead with the shoulders. Chin is tucked, you're looking up toward the ceiling. Really focusing on keeping the back flat. Nice, bring your arms up. Hands are over shoulders, pull your shoulder blades into the mat. Your legs are up in a 90 degree angle. We're gonna go opposite arm and leg. So you can do arm, you can do leg, or you can do opposite arm and leg, whoops, all together, you choose. The big thing with this is you're keeping your shoulder blades squeezed into the mat and your back stays flat. If your back pops, you can either go smaller range of motion, switch to just arm or just leg, or you may need to take a little bit of a break because if that back pops, your abs are getting tired. So pull that belly button in nice and tight toward the floor. Awesome. Okay. We're going to go to bicycle. So if you have weight, you can add weight. If not, you can do it without. Similar to that opposite arm and leg, but a little bit faster. Again, focuses on the back is flat. Good job, couple more seconds here. All right, nice. Okay, one more in this series. If you have weights, you can hold them over your shoulders. If not, just do it exactly like we did before. And we're gonna just do legs. So an advanced move is your leg goes all the way down to the ground like this. Smaller range of motion is good too. You're still gonna feel it in your core. If you don't have the weights, I just want you to really focus on the fact that you're pulling those shoulder blades together. Don't forget to breathe.
Nice. Okay, let's repeat that. So we're going to start with our crunches. This time for your crunch, I want you to come up for a count of one. We're going down for three. Same thing. Up for one, down, down, down. You're still leading with the shoulders. So you can be all on your foot, just the heels, or you can have your legs up. So you can advance that. Use whatever modification you need to make sure you're doing a good job at the exercise. Everybody's different. Deep breathing. Good, okay. Now we're going back to R. This is called the dead bug. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. So you choose arm, leg, or alternating. Keep the back flat and shoulder blades are squeezed into the mat. Good job, keep that back flat. All right, good. Now we're going to leg lowers, either with weight or no weight. Squeeze those shoulder blades. Really focus here on the flat, low back. Oh, I don't know about you guys, I'm feeling it in my abs. That's good. All right, nice job. Okay, let's do some bridging. So again, if you have weight, hold it overhead or over shoulders, sorry. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. If not, just hold your arms up here. We're coming up for two, down for two, squeezing through the glutes. We're gonna stretch a lot of hips too. So our hips are getting a little bit weak and maybe a little bit tight. We're not gonna let that happen. Good job, good job. Really pause at the top when you squeeze those glutes. Nice. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of upper back work. So you're on your stomach and you're gonna have your arms out like you're flying. Keep looking down, tuck your chin. So you're gonna lift, arms are coming up and then down. So the important part is that you're tucking your chin, your nose is almost on the mat. Your belly button is tight. So we're doing everything we can to counteract the prolonged sitting. So we gotta work abs and we gotta work back. Good, take your hands on either side of your shoulders, sit on back into a prayer stretch. Hold it there into that prayer stretch. Take a couple nice deep breaths. All right, nice job. We're almost 15 minutes into it here, so we're gonna come back up into a plank. We're gonna do a plank series next. I do promise we're gonna do lots of stretching, don't worry. Okay, so we're coming into a plank. Forearm and toes or knees, whichever you choose. Remember, it's a straight line between your shoulder, your hip, and your knee, so if you need to drop to your knees and lift your feet or keep your feet down, Whatever works, as long as it feels fine on your back and you're able to maintain that good, solid, straight position. So the other thing that we do sometimes on Fridays is we might do the same kind of core exercise, but we slow it way down, which sounds great and easy, right? But it's not. Nice, come to a side plank. So you make sure that elbow is under the shoulder that you're not out here. We're gonna modify it into a bent knee on the bottom. I want you to lift your arm up and I want you to lift your leg up. We're gonna hold all of that there. Now, an advancement would be elbow toward your side or knee up or the full on is the elbow meets the thigh. So you choose or you can just stay in this plank position. It's up to you. We'll come back to this again, so don't worry. 
Good. Okay, coming back to forearm and knees or toes. Three, two, one. Drop it there. So when you're doing your planks, your forearm should be straight. Don't hold your hands together. I mean, you can, but it just won't be as hard. Squeeze your glutes. Pull your abs in tight. So your glutes are kind of tucked under you, sort of. Good job, good job. We got about eight seconds left here. Three, two, one. Take a quick drop back onto your heels and then we're transitioning to the other side, side plank. So you don't have to flip around if you don't want to. I just don't want you guys having to work in the back. All right, we're starting here. Okay, remember you can do arm, you can do leg, or you can do both. You choose. It all adds a good amount of strength in your core. Don't forget to breathe. Awesome. Okay, we're going to do one more forearm plank. And then we're going to progress from there. Three, two, one. Holding that plank. So the third round, you may notice it's a little harder. That's okay, we're building strength. So if by that third one you need to drop to your knees, you need to modify it, that's perfectly fine. If you are on your toes and you want to rock, rock back and forth, just to kind of take your mind off the plank, you can. Four more seconds. Two, one, awesome. Sit on back into that prayer stretch. I'm gonna move around and get ready. You guys stretch there a little bit. Good, we're 15 minutes in. So let's do one more side plank on each side. And then we'll get into our mobility work. Okay, so we're going to star side. Choose which one you want to do. Good, so if you haven't already found uh, Southwest Minnesota State University Exercise Science on Facebook, um, go ahead and find that page because we started to post some information. We're gonna be posting more information on there to just help us stay healthy, good. Other side, when I get the YouTube channel figured out with these videos, I'll post that on there for you. And just sharing other information. There's so much good fitness information. So many people are doing free classes online, offering free workouts. You know, we're all, in this together and our goal is to stay healthy. I think I told you guys, some of you who are on here the other day, I read something, let's get shredded, not fluffy. So it's like the blizzard that won't end. So we can't, we can't let that happen. All right, nice job, drop back into your prayer stretch. You guys hold there. I'm just gonna transition for the next thing. So you're holding that prayer stretch right there. I want you to take some nice deep breaths. Good, you're taking your nice deep breaths there. So let's now move into some mobility. So sounds good. Mobility sometimes is hard too. So we're going to, you're gonna come out of your prayer stretch and I want you to sit back on your heels. You're gonna have your left hand right in front of your face so it's in the middle. You take your right hand, you reach through, and then you come over leading with your thumb. I want you to do 10 on each side. So when you're doing that, lead with the thumb, pull the shoulder blade back. So it's a really good way to open up that chest, open up the middle back. Sometimes people feel in their low back. If you want to modify it, you can flatten your feet and sit back lower. You'll just feel that a little bit different spot in your spine. Okay, good. I totally lost count. We're gonna do about 10. Okay, then we're gonna switch. Other hand is in front of your face. Again, modifying where you need it to feel the best stretch. Reach, thumb back, 10 times. Good. 
Good. Again, modifying as you need. Pull that shoulder blade back. This is really a good stretch for that middle back, thoracic spine. We're going to do one more for our T-spine. Going to focus a lot on hips and low back today, too. A little bit of neck. I don't know. I feel like I've had a headache for like three days. Good. I totally lost count. That was fun. Come on into a prayer stretch. You guys hang out there for just a little bit. You guys hang in that prayer stretch. Take three nice deep breaths there. All right, I want you to come out of that prayer stretch. You're gonna come back into a hands and knees position. Take your, um, take one hand and put it behind your head. And then you can sit back wherever you feel you need. That bottom hand is in front of your face, just like it was the first time. This time you're gonna take your elbow. Your elbow's gonna to touch that arm and then it's gonna pull up, 10 on each side. <sighs> Looks easy, it's not. <laughs> I'll count this time. So you're still focusing on pulling that shoulder blade back. Oh, it's just a little tighter. Switch after you're done with 10. That opposite hand is right in front of your face. When you're done with 10, just sit back in that prayer stretch. Everybody's gonna hold there for a couple breaths. Nice job. Okay, we've got one more middle back one. Same idea, the right hand is in front of your face. This time you take that arm and you put it behind your back. It's the same idea, it's gonna feel way different. So your shoulder comes down toward the floor and then pull that shoulder back squeezing that shoulder blade, 10 on each side. This is gonna get you a little bit more in that low back. Try not to come way up, try to stay a little bit lower and rotate versus coming up. That's hard, that's tight. If that's hard, if you feel like you're popping up, just come down to a forearm instead of your hand. That will force you to stay low, 10 on each side. I'm gonna stay for him because I think I was cheating a little bit. So you're leading with the shoulder. You can think of leading a little bit with the elbow, but it's really the shoulder because you're really getting that rotation through the lower part of your back. We've got 10. When you're done with 10, come back into your prayer stretch. And then we're gonna come into um, take both hands on off to one side in that prayer stretch. So you're leaning over and then drive your hips on the opposite side of your hand. Whoo, nice deep breaths here. Good, now we're gonna walk it to the other side. So same exact, the exact thing. And then your hips, push them opposite of your hands. So you should feel this a little bit more, not only in that low back, but in the um, upper back through your lats, right in here. Okay, come back to the middle. We're gonna transition into a pigeon stretch. So you're gonna take your, whichever leg, you're gonna put it in front of you like an upside down V, and just wiggle around so you can get comfortable. Our goal is to try to have the whole leg on the mat. Your chest comes forward over the leg, rest your head, if you can't rest your head, you can take a fist, rest your head here. If that doesn't work, you can do two fists. But what I want you to do is find a place where your head is supported. You might have to wiggle around a little bit. But I want you to find support for your head so you can really let everything relax. While you're doing this, now we're moving more into our mobility and our longer duration holds for our stretches. I want you to really focus on breathing. Our 
her hips get really tight. We're sitting. Okay, now you're gonna take a hand on either side of that knee. We're gonna press up. Inhale, press up, exhale. Let those shoulders relax. Now in this position, if you wanna drive that back leg back a little bit more, and some deep breaths here. So we're really opening up that hip with a little bit of a stretch in the back. While you're here, I want you to tuck your chin. You're looking down at the floor with your chin tucked. I want you to bring your ear toward a shoulder. So you feel a little bit of a stretch in the side of your neck. Keep your chin tucked though. That'll make the stretch harder, but that's okay. That's what we want to stretch. You can even look down at your armpit a little bit and that will get a little bit more in the back of the neck. Keep breathing. Okay, good. Bring your head back to the middle. We're gonna transition to the other side pigeon. Again, remembering we're not even left and right, so one side might be tighter than the other. Wiggle around, find where it's comfortable. Get that chest over the knee and support your head however you need. Nice deep breaths. And as you're holding all these stretches, when you feel a release, you can switch your position and maybe get a little bit more into a stretch. Kind of just depends on the day. Okay, both hands are gonna go on either side of that knee. Inhale up, exhale, relax the head and shoulders. Drive that back leg back a little bit more if you need to. Just gonna hold it there. Couple deep breaths. Now, your chin is tucked. Now you're gonna bring your ear toward your shoulder the other direction. Just keep your chin tucked. This is the one too where if you need, you can look down towards your armpit a little bit more to feel it a little bit more in the back of the neck. All right, nice job. Come back to the middle with your head nice and slow. You don't wanna get out of those stretches too fast. We're gonna come out of this stretch. We're gonna go into an all four stretch. I'm gonna give you a new forearm stretch. So those of you that were in class with me the other day, we did our forearms this way with our palms up and then palms down. The new stretch that I show you, if that's too much, go back to the uh, stretches like this. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna be on your hands and knees. You're gonna turn your hands backwards so they're facing you. So your fingers are pointing towards your knees. Okay, this is a pretty aggressive stretch. If that's too much, you can turn them a little bit to the side. But this is a great one for the forearms, but again, it's a little aggressive. And then, with your nice deep breathing, so what you can do, if that's too much, you can crawl your knees forward. If you need more, if you're flexible, crawl your knees back, but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lean back. You're gonna really feel that in the forearms. It's a great stretch. Nice deep breathing here. Again, remember, if that's too much, go back to the straight ones. So those of you who are liking this stretch, hang out there, nice deep breathing. I'll just repeat one more time. So if that's too much, this is your stretch. So your hands and your palm, pulling it back. And then you're gonna rotate out a little bit. And then the other one is your hand is pointed down. This one you're gonna rotate out as well because a lot of times we feel that from keying through the arm, so you can pull it down and then out. All right, so wherever you're at, come out of that stretch. We're gonna move into a half kneel, right foot forward, left leg, left leg back. Both hands are on the inside of your foot, on the front. Come down to a forearm or two, if you can. So on Fridays, when we work on a little bit more, bit more mobility, I like to hold these stretches a little bit longer. So most of the time, we wanna hold a stretch at least 30 seconds if we have the time. If we don't, a stretch is better than nothing. 
if you're really working on getting some good increase in your mobility, you want to hold it a couple minutes, which is a long time. So I usually suggest you set a timer. We're not going to do two minutes today so we can get a little bit more in, but we're going to hold them a little bit longer. Nice deep breaths. Keep doing your nice deep breathing right here. And as we hold these stretches a little bit longer, if you're getting too uncomfortable, you can always just come out of it a little bit, but try not to give up on the stretch. But of course we shouldn't have any pain. Good. I want you to put your hands back on the inside of that foot and then you're gonna come out of that stretch nice and slow. We're gonna to transition to the other side. So when you hold those stretches a little bit longer, make sure you transition out of it a little bit slower. Because sometimes those muscles, we've asked a lot of them, and so we need to give them a little bit of time so that they don't get too growly and just tighten up really fast if we come out of that stretch too fast. So take your time. Good, we're nice, deep breathing here. So let's make a goal. Keep going. Let's make a goal. When we all get back into our routines, we are more flexible. We're more mobile. We don't have as many aches and pains and headaches because we have been taking this time to really work on our mobility. Good job. Keep breathing. 20 more seconds here. Good, 10 more seconds. Okay, now you're gonna transition out of that nice and slow again. So both hands on the inside of that foot and then come out of that slow. We're gonna come down into a sitting position. We're gonna work on our hamstrings a little bit more. So we're gonna start with one. So one leg's out, the other leg's tucked. I want you to bring your chest over your knee, so don't worry about touching your toes. If you keep your back nice and straight, you'll feel it more in the hamstring. All right, so we're gonna give this one a good long minute. Every exhale, try to let that low back and the back of that leg go and come a little bit forward. But again, I don't want you to round your back in order to get to your toes. Keep your back straight so you're hinging at your hip. Good, keep going. We're gonna hold this here another 30 seconds or so. Good, every exhale, just come a little bit closer, a little bit more forward. So I always tell my students, you're always helping your clients set goals. Well, our goals might be different. Now that we, are, we don't have a nice fitness center to go to, but that doesn't mean that we still can't make gains. So maybe our goal, isn't so much gaining some certain amount of strength because we don't have a lot of weight, but our goal may be to gain more mobility. We're still working on keeping healthy, staying healthy, staying sane. Good, deep breathing. All right, nice job. Transition out of that slow, we're gonna go to the other side. So same idea. And again, a lot of people, their hamstrings are tight anyway maybe tighter on one side or the other. So just kind of find where you're at. We're gonna hold this one here for a minute. And with every exhale, let the back of that leg go. Keep your chest straight. Try not to do this. Oh, I'm not doing a very good job, am I? You guys can all keep me accountable. I gotta keep that chest straight. Hinging at the hip. Good, keep going. Good, we've got 30 more seconds here. You're doing awesome. My friends that do hair that are cosmetologists for a living say, please make a goal of not cutting your own hair or using store-bought hair color. So there's a goal, right? We all have goals. Two 
two more seconds. Good, we're gonna come out of that nice and slow. We're gonna go to a seated straddle. So we're gonna keep working on those hamstrings. So if you have a weight that you can use to help you in your seated straddle, you can use that. So our seated straddle, our legs are wide and you can kind of wiggle back and forth so you have a good base. We're gonna come forward. So again, if you have a weight or something that can help to give you a little bit of counterbalance. And we're gonna hold this one here for a while. Now this one, don't worry so much about if your back rounds, because this can also stretch your low back and your middle back. So you can just fold into this stretch with a lot of deep breathing. Good, keep breathing and just fall into that stretch. Let your head relax. Let your arms relax in this one. And as you keep exhaling, see if you can make some progress in that forward position. If you want a little bit more of a stretch, you can pull your toes towards your nose. Sometimes that's a little bit too aggressive. So if you're doing a good job just relaxing everything, just keep those feet relaxed. Nice job, we got about 20 more seconds here. Oh, we're making good progress. Getting that nose closer and closer to the floor. All right, come out of that nice and slow. You're gonna bring your feet together. So if you feel like you need to help a little bit, otherwise you're gonna bring your feet together, we're gonna forward fold over our feet. So you're opening up the hips, really let the legs, let the knees fall toward the floor. Your trunk is falling toward your feet. You're curling up in a ball, kind of. Now in this position too, if you want to go back to those neck shoulder or look at your armpit, this is a good time to take some time to do some more neck stretches. Good, hang out there. Okay, now from here, all I want you to do is reach your arms forward. So you're still in your seated, um, with your feet together, your arms are low back. Some of you may feel it underneath your shoulders. Still breathing. Or oh, time's going fast. All right, I would like to either a seated straddle or a crisscross applesauce. So this is your crisscross, but I'd like you to try a seated straddle because that stretches your thighs a little bit more. So you're sitting like this on your feet. If that bothers your ankles, you can roll up your mat or you can use a blanket or a pillow, whatever you have, and you're gonna put, it gives your ankle a little bit more support. Okay, so we're gonna do a thigh stretch. So what you're gonna do in this position is you're gonna come back like this trying to keep your knees on the ground. So if you're in a crisscross, a different position. But this is a great stretch for the front of the thighs. Those of you who are not doing so well with this, let me show you a modification. So your modification is a sideline quad stretch. So you grab your foot, if you can't grab your foot, you, so you can hang on, and then you bring it back, as long as your knee is in line with your hip. So if you're gonna modify that, just make sure you do that on both sides. Okay, so if you've modified that, go ahead and do that on both sides. Those of you who are hanging in your saddle stretch, just keep hanging in your saddle stretch. This one takes every exhale. If you can, you can walk back a little bit further. Some people can lay down on the ground in this position. Bless them. I don't think I'll ever do that. Oh, nice. Good, good. Keep breathing. So if you're doing the modified one, and if you haven't switched to the other leg, I want you to go ahead and switch to the other leg now for your quad stretch. If you're in your saddle, you can come back a little bit more. If you can, if not, just hold it there. All right, I want you to come out of this stretch nice and slow. And what we're gonna do is come back to a seated position. So whether that's a seated straddle or um, a crisscross applesauce, I wanna show you something for your neck because a lot of you are so long. So what you can do, and you can do this sitting or laying down on the ground. You take your hands, kind of put them, fold them over, you can just use one hand. Put it on your chin, and I know we're not supposed to touch our face, but make sure, wash your hand. And then 
you're gonna push down on your chin. If you do this laying down, you'll feel a much more intense stretch. It's right at the base of the skull. That's really good for those tension headaches. You know, the headaches, so you're pushing. So your chin is tucked and you're pushing. Again, I really like to do that one on the ground because you have a little bit more leverage from the ground. Great, great one for headaches. And you can also put um, tennis balls or um, you can take oranges um, and freeze them first and then put them as a great pressure relief for the base of that neck. Okay, we have like four minutes. So let's do our bound eagle. So our arms are at our side, you're gonna cross and then grab your hands, drop your elbows. Inhale, exhale, drop your arms. Now in this one, you're still tucking your chin. Good, bring your arms out, cross it the other way. Inhale, exhale, drop your arms, tuck your chin. Very good, come out of that. We'll go on to our rebound. So our rebound is our favorite one. For those of you who are new, here we go. So you can be on your back, on your stomach, knees bent, knees straight, whatever feels good to you. But we've done some aggressive stretching, so you wanna just give your body some time to enjoy that, do some deep breathing. Sometimes after we do a lot of that stretching, you got a little pricks. Maybe my back feels tight right now, I just gotta give my body some time to relax. So rebounding for at least two to five minutes. And if you're feeling stressed out, kids are stressed out, this is just a great way to kind of center yourself and get some hot, ourselves relaxed. So some people like back, some people like to bend their knees. Some people lay on their side. One of my favorite ones is child's pose. I got kind of a tight back, so I like to lay, I like to rebound a child's pose on my arms at my side. All right, so you guys keep rebounding. You're gonna rebound here for at least a couple more minutes. I'm gonna leave, um, leave the music going for you. If you have any questions, concerns, reach out. Um, we'll see you next week.